Hello again. In this lesson, we're going to talk about fan laws. And fan laws are pretty awesome. Um, they talk about the speed of a fan and the airflow and the braking horsepower and the static pressure, and they all use proportions. Sometimes we have inverse relationships, sometimes we have direct relationships. Um, what's a little bit different this time is that our proportions might involve more than just plain old quantities by themselves. Sometimes the quantities are squared or cubed or have a square root in them, but that's okay. It's not hard to do. So you have your calculator, you have your guided notes. Let's get started. Fan laws talk about how changing the speed of the fan or changing the diameter of the motor pulley or the fan pulley changes the air quantity, the static pressure, and the brake horsepower. It's all related. Now, I will tell you that I was looking around trying to figure out how, what to call these fan laws. And everywhere I looked, they called them different things. Some were fan laws 1, 2, and 3. Some were fan laws 1A, 1B, 1C. Um, so I didn't find any... Um, official type of numbering. So don't expect the numbering here to match the numbering that you might have someplace else. What we really want to do is just focus on, in on the concepts. All right, so the first thing we want to do is talk about what happens to the different parts of the system if you just change the fan speed. So we're only going to change one thing at a time here. If we're talking about how one change cascades through the system, then we'll just use many different formulas and get a lot of different answers. But for right now, we're going to do one thing at a time. And before we do this problem, we want to talk about what air quantity is. Air quantity is, well, the volume of air, but it's a little bit more than that. So the volume of air delivered in a given period of time. So for me, this term is a little weird because this is actually measured in cubic feet per minute. And so it's not technically a volume. This is a volume over time. So we would have cubic feet. Ooh, that's kind of bad handwriting, isn't it? Sorry about that. Let's try it again. Cubic feet per minute. And even though there's a per in here, this particular unit is often abbreviated as CFM. So you just have to know that there's a per in there and that this stands for cubic feet per minute. Okay, so the very first fan law we have says that the air quantity is directly proportional to the speed. Directly proportional means that we can set up this organizational table in two directions. You'll notice that we've got a little subscript of 1 here and a little subscript of 2 here. So the subscripts tell you when the measurement was taken. Um, the 1 talks about the original measurement. So all the original stuff goes down in the denominator. And the 2 talks about the measurement that was taken second. And all the new stuff goes up in the numerator. The fan laws are written like this because usually we want to figure out what the effect of doing something will be before we do it. And having the variable up in the numerator means that it's a little bit easier to solve the equation when we get done. All right, at any rate, we were talking about being directly proportional and how the organizational table can get set up in two different directions. So if we were going to be directly proportional to the speed, and speed is measured in RPMs because we have turning things, then we would have RPM sub 2 up there and RPM sub 1 down here. So we have original measurements in the denominator, new measurements in the numerator. First fraction talks about air quantity, second fraction talks about speed. We have organization in two different directions because we have a direct relationship. These things are directly proportional. 
Maybe we should highlight that right there, directly proportional. All right, so let's see what we can do with this particular fan law. We're not going to do every single bit or every single step in this lesson like we did before because you've been solving proportions now for quite a while. You know that we need to fill in the values where they belong, so let's start there. Set up our framework here. Let's see. A fan supply is 4,200 cubic feet per minute. That's down here. When it's running at 700 RPM. So the original measurements are in line with each other. If the speed is increased to 750 RPM, we want to know what is the quantity of air supplied. So as the speed increases, the amount of air per minute increases. All right. What do we do from here? Well, the variable is in the numerator, so we know that we just need to take this equation and multiply both sides by 4200 to isolate the x. Right, that was the whole goal, so that the 4200s cancel, and x is now all by itself. 750 divided by 700 multiplied by 4200. And let's just see what that is. 750 multiplied by 4200 divided by 700 comes out to be 4500. So x is 4500. And what were we talking about? Well, that x was up here in the numerator on the left hand side, so that's a new air quantity. So at a speed of 750 RPM, the fan supplies 4,500 cubic feet of air per minute CFM. All right, that's pretty much the way it goes. There are six fan laws that we're going to look at. So let's see what the next one's all about and flip the page. This one's a little different. Fan law two says the brake horsepower is directional, sorry, directly proportional to the cube of the speed. So it's not proportional to the speed by itself, but the speed that is being cubed. And cube means to multiply something by itself three times. We have three factors of that amount. Well, let's see, what would that look like? Uh, the speed, well that's in RPM, and being directly proportional, we know that the value for RPM 2 is going to be across from the value from BHP 2. But this is being cubed, so we want some parentheses around here, and we want to raise that to the third power. And we'll do the same thing in the denominator, RPM 1, and we'll cube that. I think I'm going to clean that up. That looks a little sloppy. Hang on. There. That's a little better. Not a lot better, but a little bit. So before we go on, we should probably talk about brake horsepower and what that is. And brake horsepower talks about the power required by the fan. which is different than the power that's being supplied by the motor. So we care about brake horsepower because, of course, we don't want the brake horsepower to be higher than the power supplied by the motor. If you need more power than what you're getting, you're going to overload the system. Okay, so otherwise, take a second and copy this formula down. Well, I'm going to take a second and copy this formula down over here because I would need some space. So I'm going to scroll up. and put the formula where it belongs. Okay, now we're ready to go. Don't be bothered by the fact that there's a cube here. You know what cubing means. We know how to deal with this. Let's just start like we always do by putting the values in where they belong. So let's see. The braking horsepower originally 
is 22. So that belongs in the denominator of the first fraction. We want it to become a breaking horsepower of 20. That goes in the numerator. Right now, the fan is operating at 1700 RPM. So that value also goes in the denominator. So all the original measurements are down here in the bottom. But the formula says that we need to cube this value. So we'll put an exponent of 3 up there. And then we've got this RPM. The new RPM, and that value needs to be cubed. OK, so I'm going to leave RPM sitting here in the formula or in our work as we go all the way through. If you wanted to, you could put an X up there instead if you think that makes it better. But um, this one, I think I'm just going to leave these all the way through, actually probably for this whole lesson. All right, so let's see what we need to do here. The first thing that needs to happen is we need to undo this cube. And we've done this before, but it was a long time ago. To undo a cube, you have to take the cube root. of both sides, right? Remember what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. And since this is a proportion, that means take the cube root of all pieces, all the numerators and all the denominators. All right, so we need a cube root of 20. Now this is a square root, it's a cube root if we put a little three up there in the index. And the cube root of 22, so put a little 3 there. And just so that you see how this all comes out, we're going to just take the cube root of both sides without doing any simplifying. So we're just going to put a cube root over everything that we have, just so you can watch what happens. Okay. Now the cool thing here is that if you take a cube root of something that's been cubed, they undo each other. That's the whole point. Cube roots and cubing are inverse relationships. So this cleans up quite a bit. On the left hand side we still have the cube root of 20 divided by the cube root of 22, but that's okay with us because those are just values and the calculator knows how to take the cube roots of those numbers. But on the right hand side, RPM2 is now all alone. Or at least it doesn't have a bunch of cubing or anything like that. It's all cleaned up nicely. And in the denominator, there is a nice 1700. So the cube root and the cube undid themselves. What that means now, get some more space here is that if I want to find RPM2, you know that we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 1700. And on the right hand side, those 1700s are going to cancel out. And on the left hand side, we have 1700 multiplied by the cube root of 20. And then we'll divide by the cube root of 22. So let's get our calculator and do that and see what we have. All right, let's see. We have 1700 multiplied by, and I don't have a cube root button on here. Um, we have a square root key over here by the square, and way up here written on the calculator itself, it says x with a little thing that looks like a square root. That's our generalized root key. So we want to tell the calculator that we're going to take a cube root, so the index has to be a 3, type the 3. And then to access this function, since it's typed on the calculator, you know we need to push the second key and then grab the function like that. And so now it looks like a little cube root. So we need the cube root of 20. Use your arrow keys to come out of the cube root and then we'll divide by the cube root, so we'll do that one more time, of 22. Come out of the cube root and we'll calculate. All right, RPMs are generally rounded to the nearest whole number, so instead of equals we'll just say approximately, but here we are. 
1640, and this will be 7 RPMs. And leaving this here tells us that that's the new value for the RPMs. So we're going to reduce the speed down to 1647 RPM. All right, and that's how we deal with cubes and cube roots. Let's flip the page and see where we head next. So the idea of being directly proportional hasn't changed, but the wording tells us what we want to put in each location. Okay, let's see, fan law number three. So there's only six of them. Fan law number three says that the speed is directly proportional to the square root of the static pressure. All right square root. So not a cube root this time, but a square root. But directly proportional tells us that things are going to be lined up with each other. So the speed, the second speed, is going to match with the square root of the second static pressure. And we'll just abbreviate static pressure with SP. So we'll say SP sub 2. And then down here then, of course, we need the square root of SP sub 1. So we're directly proportional, that means we can organize in both directions, to the square root of the static pressure. What is static pressure? Static pressure talks about the resistance of a fan system resistance to airflow. So you may have friction involved, there might be some debris inside your ducts, you might have poorly directed airflow, a lot of things can keep air from flowing smoothly through a system. We measure this static pressure in inches of water gauge. And so the units for that are WG for water gauge. All right. Otherwise, let's do a little calculating and check out an example. I'm going to copy the formula down where it belongs and scroll up just a little bit so I have some space. There we go. And now we're ready to fill in values where they belong. Let's see. When the fan operates at 1400 RPMs, so that's our original measurement, 1400 RPMs belongs down here in the denominator. The static pressure is measured at 1.5 inches water gauge, so we have the square root of 1.5. And that's too high, so we want to reduce the static pressure to 1.4 inches of water gauge, so the square root of 1.4 will be our new static pressure, should be right across from the new speed, the new set, or the new measurement for RPM. All right, there we go, what speed is required. So this looks a little weird, but it's nothing that we can't handle, and actually, we don't even have a variable in here inside the square root, so these are just numbers, just like your calculator could do cube roots before, your calculator can certainly do square roots. If you want to isolate RPM number 2 from the rest of the equation, we have to multiply both sides by 1400. So RPM number 2, right, if I multiply the left side by 1400, the 1400s will cancel, leaving RPM number 2 all by itself. And if we multiply the right hand side by 1400, we get the square root of 1.4 divided by the square root of 1.5 all multiplied by 1400. You guys have done this enough times that you don't need to see me write the 1400 on both sides of the equation anymore, I'm, I'm going to hope. And then we just calculate and see what happens. RPM number 2 is equal to, let's clear this one, square root button right on the calculator right up above the squaring. So we need the square root of 1.4 come out of the square root, multiply by 1400, 
divide by the square root of 1.5. Use your arrow keys to come out of the square root and let's see what we get. Alright, there we go. And we want to, of course, round this to the nearest whole number. 1,350 and since the digit to the right of the 2 is a 5, the 2 rounds up to a 3 and this is RPM. So we are going to reduce the speed to 1,353 RPM. And if you think about friction for a little bit, this might help you realize why when the speed goes up, the static pressure also goes up. Not exactly in the same way, but in the way that the square root increases. Okay, uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Fan law number four. What did we do? Well, we just did something talking about RPMs related to the static pressure. And a little while ago, we did RPMs related to the airflow, those cubic feet per minute. So if we were to combine those two ideas, we could come up with this other fan law here that says the cubic feet per minute is also directly proportional to the square root of the static pressure. So it's no big surprise to you that the formula looks like this. You've seen things be proportional to the square root of the static pressure just a second ago. The higher the airflow, the higher the static pressure. Okay, so there's not enough room on this page for us to do our next example. So I just took the formula and copied it onto the next page. So there's nothing new here. I just was recopying to make it nicer for us. And let's try an example here. We'll fill in everything that we know. The airflow in the duct was 2200 CFM. So that's down here. It was an original measurement. So we'll put it in the denominator. The static pressure was 8 tenths of an inch water gauge. So there's 0 0.8. But remember, this is varying according to the square root of the static pressure. So we'll get the square root symbol in there. Now the airflow is 2,500 cubic feet per minute. We expect the static pressure to increase. So we're looking for static pressure number two, but don't forget that there's a square root in there also. So this is a little bit different than what we had before because the variable is inside of the square root, but that's okay. The first thing we want to do is get rid of the square roots. And you already know that if we want to undo a square root, square both sides. And just like we did when we were working with the cubes and the cube roots, this means we want to square all the parts. All right. So we're going to work this one all the way out so you can see the magic happen. If we square all the parts, we have 2,500 squared compared to 2,200 squared. It's not necessary to get great big giant values for this. Your calculator can handle it. And it actually your calculator works a little bit better if you do the entire calculation at once anyway. But now we have the square root of SP2 and this square root is being squared and the square root of 0 0.8 is also going to be squared. And of course, the nice thing about this is that squaring a square root undoes the square root. And of course, the same thing will happen down here in the denominator. If you square a square root, then you undo the square root. So what we actually have is SP2 all by itself in the numerator and 0 0.8 without any clutter all by itself in the denominator. Now on the left hand side we have 2500 and that's still being squared over 2200 which is also still being squared. But that's okay. Our goal is to get to the SP, not to worry about what happens to the 2500. Alright, 
Now, if we look at it, this is looking really familiar, right? I want to get SP number two all by itself. It's currently being divided by 0 0.8. So you know we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 0 0.8. On the right-hand side, the 0 0.8s are going to cancel. So SP number two will be all by itself. On the left-hand side, Remember, we're multiplying it by 0 0.8 also, and we still have 2,500 squared divided by 2,200 squared. So this is a calculator job. SP number 2 is, and now you see why it's nice to kind of keep these uh, abbreviations all the way through the work. Let's see. I'll clear this off and look at it. 0 0.8 multiplied by 2,500. And this 2,500 is being squared, so press your x squared key and you'll see the exponent pop up there. And then divide by 2,200. And of course we'll square the 2,200 also. So the calculation work, I'm sorry, the work on the calculator is not all that difficult, but you do have to keep good work on your paper so you know what it is we are entering. Otherwise, here we go. This is about 1.0330 stuff, stuff, stuff. All right, and we want to round to the nearest tenth because that's the way the water gauge pressure came to us before. So this is about 1.0, keep that tenth space there, inches water gauge. Okay. Down here on the bottom of the page, we've talked a lot about changing the speed. And of course, in order to change the speed, sometimes you just have to go in and swap out a pulley and make it either larger or smaller. And that, of course, changes everything. Huh. So, hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. Fan law number five says the diameter of the motor pulley is directionally proportional to the speed. You should be able to fill in the right hand side of this equation. You know what directly proportional means and you know that we use RPM to talk about speed with the units. Pause the recording, fill in this right hand side, see what you get. Hopefully that's what you did. That the second set of measurements are in line with each other in the numerators the first set of measurements are in line with each other in the denominators because that's what directly proportional tells us about the relationship. All right, we've done a lot of work with proportions, so I'm not actually going to give you an example that involves the diameter of the motor pulley and the speed because solving that would just be, I don't know, a little redundant. Let's move on to something else. What if we look at the other pulley? Remember that the fan pulley and the motor pulley are connected by a belt, and that means that they have an inverse relationship. So if we swap out the fan pulley for something of a different size, the effect is going to be inversely proportional to the speed. All right, so you know what? Try this one also. When you look back on what we did on the last page, we had motor pulley uh, D for diameter. So if I did this, if I said fan pulley diameter number two, you should be able to fill in the rest of the proportion. Pause the recording, give it a try. Hopefully your proportion looks something like this because when things have an inverse relationship, the second set of measurements need to be diagonally opposite each other. And the first set of measurements need to be diagonally opposite each other. Okay, so here's our last example for this particular lesson. Let's see what we have. Because, of course, if you change the size of the pulley, then you change the speed. And changing the speed affects everything else, and we can use all the fan laws that came before to figure out what those changes are going to be. What do we have? A fan operates at a speed of 700 RPM. So that will be our first measurement for speed. That belongs up here. 
in the numerator. The diameter of the fan pulley is 4.6 inches. Those measurements go are related, so the 4.6 goes in the denominator of the other fraction. This pulley is being replaced. The new fan pulley has a diameter of 4 inches. What is the new speed? And so we'll have RPM, whoops, RPM, number 2 is down here. All right, you know how to solve this. As a matter of fact, you should solve this without me talking. Pause your recording one more time, work this all the way out, see what you get. All right, let's compare. The first step, of course, is to multiply both fractions by both denominators and watch the canceling happen. And after all the canceling has happened, your next line should look like this. You know that you want to isolate RPM number 2, so we have to divide both sides of the equation by 4. The 4s on the left side will cancel out, and your next line should look like that. And then, of course, there's nothing else left to do but to calculate. 700 multiplied by 4.6 divided by 4 and we find out that RPM number 2 is 805. So we slide all the way down here and find out that the new speed is going to be 805 RPMs. And that's it. The solving part should be no problem for you. You should be really good at solving proportions by now. As before, it's always the setup. So use good labels and uh, take your care with the formulas. Okay, so uh, yeah, get started on your homework. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.